I study life on the high seas. Every time I go to the open ocean, I find something that I've never seen before. Humans need discovery. I think it's one of the fundamental aspects of our biology. We, we yearn to see what that next thing is beyond the horizon. And if we protect and conserve the ocean, we will be discovering things forever. We certainly don't want our children to live in a world where there aren't whales, coral reefs, kelp forests. But with our eyes wide open, we continue to consume nature as if it's infinite in its capacity to recover. Think about it. The biggest land grab in all of history is imminent deep sea mining. It's below the surface. Out of sight, out of mind, but it doesn't mean that it's not important. Deep sea mining is honestly just utterly ridiculous. It is like clear cutting the ocean. Defend the deep! Defend the deep sea! Defend the deep! Defend the deep sea! Unfortunately, this will cause tremendous irreparable damage to a system that we don't yet understand the deep sea. Scientists recognize that it'll take more than 10 years to obtain a baseline amount of data to even begin to understand what the impacts would be. Deep sea mining requires heavy and complex machines dropped to seabed floors from great distances. The risk of an industrial size accident impacting the environment is very real. From the science that we know, uh, we can already predict a few impacts. So first of all, there'll be physical destruction of the habitat because the machines will have to go and extract the resources. There'll be a sediment plume which will hamper living organisms. There's also the noise, the light disturbances. Also, on a bigger scale, we don't know whether those activities will uh, result in a shifting in terms of the carbon cycling and the carbon storage. It's still very much unknown. It is not necessary to destroy ocean ecosystems for these minerals. Deep sea mining companies are pushing a false narrative that it's necessary to go get these minerals from the seafloor to fuel the green transition to a fossil fuel free economy. This is a complete fabrication. Um, these minerals are, are not short in demand. Forward looking companies like the MW and Northvolt are already involved in finding alternatives for their batteries, for their technologies that do not include seabed mining. They are committing themselves to invest in a circular economy instead. But before deep sea mining can start on a commercial scale, mining regulations need to be negotiated by the member countries of the International Seabed Authority, or the ISA, a United Nations body. Unfortunately, almost two years ago, the island nation of Nauru triggered an obscure loophole called the two-year rule. What that two-year rule says is that any country comes to the floor of the International Seabed Authority and declares intent to start deep sea mining, that puts pressure on the body as a whole to deliver the full regulations within two years from that time. So theoretically, July 2023, is when the ISA should deliver the final version of the mining code to allow commercial deep sea mining to launch. However, there is enormous debate among the country members of the International Seabed Authority, as well as legal experts around the world, as to what exactly comes next. Due to the lack of deep sea scientific data, most countries, including pro-mining countries, do not feel at this time they are ready to finalize deep sea mining regulations. At a recent Congress of the International Union for Conservation of Nature, its members, representing over 160 countries, overwhelmingly adopted a moratorium on deep sea mining. 
whether it's Deep Green, Nautilus, Nori, or the Metals Company, the fact of the matter is, is that it's a small handful of companies looking to exploit our common shared resource. We need countries to take a stand at the International Seabed Authority and say no, no to deep sea mining. In July, we would like to see that governments agree to not give a license to the first mining operation uh, in the world. We would like them to instead invest in science and in a circular economy. The best possible outcome in July is that countries of the world agree to a precautionary pause, a timeout that does not allow deep sea mining to move forward and gives the countries of the world more time to negotiate a solid set of rules and a window for scientists to, to continue to study the deep sea 